right, let's get into it. So very little time, but so much to, to say on a Sunday morning like this. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, it's a privilege. I want to I start with a share a short testimony this morning. Uh, about three years ago, my wife and I opted, there's a, there's a picture on, the, on one of the slides that you could just uh, go to, and uh, I'm going to get it on now. So yeah, a few, if, if, uh, three years ago, my wife and I uh, had the privilege of being part of a ministry in, in Vintuk that was called uh, Baby's Cry. And we got introduced to, the, in the specific, the ministry basically, specifically uh, brings or, or takes goodie bags or baby bags to, um, to, to parents and, and with newborns in the Katatura State Hospital and so forth. And we were, the, we were part of that ministry when we got into Vintuk. And, and beautifully enough, we, we got to, to know some of the staff and people in Vintuk and Katatura Hospital. But I think the most important thing is that... Um, Something stirred in our hearts. So in February 2009, we, my wife and I said, no, you know, this, 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 what we feel on our heart is not something that we can shake. So we immediately, uh, after a certain event or incident or something had happened when, when they came home on the Sunday morning, that Monday we went to the social workers in, uh, of gender equality and we applied to, to be a foster family for basically abandoned babies and yeah so we had it on our hearts but we never really spoke about it and that one just that one morning that one incident that one child just stirred the water in our hearts and immediately we knew what was the right thing for us to do so our um well the way that we wanted to do fostering was to for those babies that were abandoned, if they could find the, the, the parents, we would actually take the baby in for, for, let's say, I don't know, a few weeks, a few months, and then spend time with the, um, with the mother and father. Use it as a bit of a discipling tool so that we can, get, we, we can have the baby back with, with the parents. And eventually in May 2019, three months later, all our uh, three or four months later, all our documentation were in, and the court approved us as foster parents. And it wasn't three days later that the social worker phoned us, said, listen, there's a baby for you um, that were left by her mom. We can't contact the mom. We don't know where she is, but we'd love to, uh, would you, would you come, and, come and get her? And uh, sure, it was a... It, <laughs> The thought became reality at that moment. What was a, a dream, a process, became a reality for us. And I remember specifically that Monday morning, my kids didn't want to go to school. None of them wanted to. Uh, they, they, they became ill very quickly that morning with some, some other stay-at-home flu. Or so. <laughs> and, and they were like, no, no, we want to go with, we want to go with. And I, I, I don't think that the school day could have ended for them quick enough, because at nine o'clock that morning, we stepped into the Katatura Hospital, and uh, I walked in, my wife and I together, and, and we were like very nervous, you know, um, our youngest were nine, ten, seven, eight, eight years old, seven years old, our oldest were uh, 12 years old, or 11 at that stage, they could make two-minute noodles for themselves, they could do uh, everything that they, they could by themselves. Sundays would a, was a good day for us. You know, when we are done with church, I could have my afternoon nap. Um, Saturday mornings, I slept in. There was no, there was a few things that, that we were very uh, comfortable with in our daily routine. Uh, and then, then, faith happened. <laughs> and literally, uh, it wasn't just faith in our hearts, but really faith as this little three-week-old baby. And a few weeks ago, she turned three years old. Uh, she was given into our care, and we, I remember specifically we put her into that little carry cot. And we walked out. And my wife and I looked at each other, and we said, this baby is not coming back or going anywhere. She's staying with us permanently. And um, I, 
I, I, that was a Monday morning. I phoned the, phoned the social worker immediately after we received our paperwork. I said to her, please start the proce process of adoption. That was May 2019. A few months and years went on. And two weeks ago, uh, by God's grace, we received a court date at the, at the children's court in Vintuk. On Thursday, the 14th of April, we left very early in the morning to be on time, got to the court, and the magistrate said it is in the best interest of the child to approve the adoption of faith. And you know, the most beautiful part was he, he asked us, he said, hey, what are you, um, what's the surname, are you going to, what's the surname going to be? Because she was registered on the, on the surname of the, of the social worker by that time. And we said, definitely an archer. So legally, she, she was, she became ours on paper. But you know, the day that we, that we went to go, go get her, she was ours already. And there were two things, and, and I want to highlight that um, this morning at, for, from a story, is how God reveals it's a revela it was a revelation for us. It was part of our story of how God reveals the, the process of adoption for us as believers as well. And, and this is how he does it with each one of us. You know, for, for us, we chose faith. We didn't know who we are going to get, what condition that baby is going to be in. But we chose her before we knew all of this. And that was sort of a... A non-negotiable thing that my wife and I said, this, this is, we're going to take care of this baby. And, but the same principle applies for how the Lord looks at us. He chose us in love. In love. He chose us. It was because of love that he chose each one of us. And knowingly and willingly, we chose her to make her our own and accept her as part of our family accept her as one of our own children. And the same with the Lord. He chose you. We didn't, we, I didn't choose him in the beginning because I didn't know. But he chose me. And because he chose me, there was an opportunity for me to become aware of him. And, and through that, I was able to make a choice to choose him. But the, the key is in love, he chose me first. All right. And then the second thing is, she was going to grow up into a new culture. Because from, from her background and what we understand, she's, a, uh, she's got a Vambu, she Vambu bloodline by the looks of it. And the other one is a bit more, of, we, we're not sure where the mom it might be. Um, uh, they suspect that she's a Cape Townian from, from Cape Town. But the thing is, I don't know any of those two cultures. And I'm, I was not going, we were not going to, to actually bring her up in that culture because she is part of our family. It's a new culture and new things. So she, grow, she was going to grow up differently. So one of the key differences is that um, obviously her hair and my hair is not the same. <laughs> so if, if you, uh, I haven't been, my fingers don't work as, as quickly as, as the ladies here. And, and thank goodness we have Jessica at our house from time to time to help us with the braids and stuff. But that's part of the cultural things that we, we had to embrace that we did not know. And we needed help in that sense um, to, to allow her to grow up. But we also had to ad uh, adapt. So she was growing up in a new culture. And, and, this, and the same with us. As when we receive Jesus as our Savior, when, when we accept him as our Savior, we also become part of a new kingdom and a new culture. And in the same line, we become citizens of the kingdom. And that becomes our first priority. So now we are citizens first of the kingdom of heaven before we are Namibians or South Africans. So there, there's a cultural change that had to take place because everything that I do now, everything that I speak of, everything that I'm aware of in my environment and for her in her environment would be our culture the way we grow up the way that she's introduced to church and you can have a look at her 
she just absolutely loves church. Our, uh, to this day, when she wakes up in the morning, this morning particularly, she would say, uh, where are we going? And I would say, we're going to church. And she's like, okay, but can I bring this and this and this one? That's all the teddies that she, she names up. And she's, she said, can I bring all of this to you with church? She's just so excited about church because of the culture and the environment that she grows in. And her new culture speaks to me personally because it represents the choice that Jesus made for me, for me and you. And, and that choice is that he called us into his new kingdom. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that, For therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is past, and behold, a new has come. And it is something that we embrace as a new culture and a new way. Because that would be, that, that would be the, the, the culture that we need to embrace that would impact the person that we've become. The people around us. So, my old cultures and my life fall away and I embrace and I cultivate a new culture to be part of this kingdom of heaven. And I learn and I, I, I learn to grow and do things the way that the king wants me to do it. So do you touch on something last week? And as he rightly said, you know, some of you might have heard uh, a teaching on adoption or sonship before. And for some, it might be a brand new first time that you hear about it. But in either way, I'd like us to, to just talk through this because this is a very, uh, a very strong uh, topic that we can talk through. But it's such an important one for each one of us. You know, the thing is that everyday, our everyday lifestyle is challenging. You guys are with me. Who, who doesn't face challenges every day? Just want to, okay. So no one faced, everyone is, everyone is good. So we, we all face challenges. And, and it sort of sometimes sets us into this survival mode to just get through if we are not positioned right. You know, it's like living from the, from the hand to the mouth. Um, and, and only when the problem is truly in our face, then we, we ask and we seek a solution instead of cultivating a life of living from the provisions of God's hand. So it's something we can cultivate, you know, being stuck and, and seeing only in that moment the quickest possible outcome than rather living from the abundance of the kingdom. Matthew 6, verse 31, and there the background is, is, is Jesus talking about the, the birds and the lilies and wildlife and, and we Everything is looked after. Everything is cared for. How much more will the Lord not care for us? And he, he continues in, that, in, in verse 31. He says, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but, you heavenly, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So many of us are in that survival mode and we are not thriving in the kingdom. And I hope to stir a bit of the water this morning in a good positive way that will allow us to feel a bit more refreshed or understand the concept of what it is to live in our identity in Christ and start to walk in that from the Father's house. So a question this morning is, are you thriving or are you just surviving? See, God doesn't want us to be like a street kid, fending for himself, fending for ourselves, day in and day out, having little means to live by. And it's often something that we can relate to, having little means to live by, but he wants us to, fr to thrive. You see, the spirit of slavery, the spirit of slavery will cause you merely to survive. But when you embrace the spirit of adoption or the spirit of sonship, that's where you will thrive. That's where the power of the Lord comes in through His Holy Spirit. So the heart behind the message is to highlight the important fact that each of us has a rightful place in the kingdom of God that we need to take up. 
and that we need to walk in. The world, and that is the things we see every day, communication on TV, what happens around the world, uh, war zones and everything like that, but, but more spiritually as well, the, the demonic influences, the, the, the spiritual influences that, that, with, that takes us away uh, into a more darker place, They've created a platform to bring confusion and divisions amongst our cultures, our socio-economic status, and gender. And see, a slave mentality will steal your joy. But the spirit of adoption will cause you to live from a place of abundance. It changes the place or position in the spirit you're living from either a street kid fending for himself or living from my dad's provision where there is an abundance. Amen. So Galatians 3 verse 26 to 28 says the following. It says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. But for you are all one in Christ. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So sonship, when we talk about sonship or the spirit of adoption, we speak about the position in the spirit which is reserved for those who have faith in God and have God as their father. So biblical sonship is a position in the spirit, therefore not bound by our cultural backgrounds, where it says nor Greek or Jew, our socio-economic status, whether we uh, are a slave or free, rich or poor, or our gender, male or female. And I think gender, the last one, that's the, the, the biggest onslaught at the moment um, around the world when it comes to to speaking about gender, all the agendas to to make you to yeah, to dethrone you in a sense of who you who, who Christ created you to be. You see, we have to have faith in the redeeming work of Jesus, and through our faith in Him, anyone can become a son of God, irrespective of our culture, backgrounds, whether we're rich or poor, because none of that matters. Because God made a way. He chose us before the foundations of the world. He chose every one of us. There's no distinction. There's no, no, no one is excluded. Say, so I am not excluded. Yes. Okay, so I'm not excluded. So our family's journey just stirred the topic in my heart where, I came to the, where we came to the realization our, of how important our identity in Christ is. In working and in, in walking this journey with faith as well. You see, when faith's um, identity birth certificate was given to us, there was only a name on there. There was no mother and no father. We were her mother and we were her mother and father. And God makes the takes us out of the world. He also gives us. He also takes this this birth certificate. That we that have, have been written, and we also don't have that, that mother and father, but he, he's predestined us, so he, he calls us back and he, he approves it because he chose us, and then he gives us a new birth certificate in him. You see, often we do things in life without knowing the why, and hopefully this morning there will be clarity on the why. Um, maybe you feel a bit lost, maybe you feel that sure, I don't have purpose or but I hope this serves as a reminder that, that you can feel confident in your identity in Christ. So you spoke about the Holy Spirit last week. And I want to encourage you, if you've missed it, please go and listen to it. It is such a valuable impartation that we receive. And, and we, need to, we need to pray more about it. We need to embrace more of the truths of the Holy Spirit. But he in particularly called the Holy Spirit the spirit of adoption. 
that was one, that's one of the names that the, the Holy Spirit carries. So in this, this for me, when he spoke about that, that created a light in me that opened up and said, hey, I can absolutely relate to that because of our family's journey, because of what happened in the past few weeks, in the past three years. If, if, if everyone, everyone talks about BC, you know, before COVID, I talk about BF, before faith. <laughs> Our life is not the same today. And I can't, I, sometimes I can't imagine how it was before her. And I'm not, I'm not saying that my own children or, or the, my, the first two, the firstborns are, that we've neglected them or no, they're not important. They were just important and part of this journey for us. But the, the, the highlight of the thing is that God enriched our lives so much more when introducing faith into our lives. And I can't imagine life without that. I cannot do that. So when, when he spoke about the spirit of adoption, it really stirred something in my heart. And, and it made me realize that, you know, there's, there's so many more orphans in the world. And I'm not just talking about the, the natural life of orphans, street kids. But we as believers often walk as street kids in the world. We have been saved, we've given our life to Christ, but we continue to live with this orphan spirit that, that totally derails our way of life and, and, and holds us back into a full walk with Christ. Romans 8.15 it says, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. So the opposite of being adopted is that orphan spirit or no place of belonging. And faith had the same story. She had no place of belonging before she came into our house. She probably would have ended up in a, in a haven or somebody, and hopefully we don't know what it, what it would have been. But you know, she came into our lives, and she had an opportunity. She had a home. She was, she was given a, a chance in life. And, and Paul used this illustration of adoption to highlight our new relationship with Christ. When we come to Christ, um, and when we, when, we have our, when we accept Christ as our Savior, the, the very same thing happens. You see, in, in the Roman culture, an adopted child gained all the rights of a legitimate child in the new family. And they ultimately became a full heir, the same as a biological child. So faith shares our full inheritance of what the, the very little my, my wife and I talk about it sometimes. You see, we, we would say that the very little that we, uh, in, the, in the natural, we can give her very little. But thankfully, in the spirit, there's a lot to, she's got a full inheritance that awaits her, you know. So, um, but when you and I became born again uh, and gave our lives to Jesus, we are adopted into this new family. And we gained all the privileges and responsibilities of a child of God. So in other words, we became sons of God. And we have the privilege to be led by the Spirit who awakens the desire in our hearts to cry, Abba, Father. That desire comes from deep within. It's a spiritual thing. It's a, it's a, uh, the, the Holy Spirit awakens that in our hearts. And we can cry, but it's easy to say, yeah, but spirit of adoption. I, I don't have a spirit of, a, I don't have an orphan spirit or something like that because my life is good. My life is okay. I've, I've got a happy family. Who of you have got happy families? Yeah, many of us. We have happy families. We we can celebrate everyday life with one another. And and when we see it in the natural, it's often very difficult to understand why. But but what is this orphan spirit that we talk about? So I would say in a response to, to, the, to a question like that is I would say that we are losing out on, the, on, on, our, on an inheritance greater than we can ever imagine. 
You see, if we, do, if we do not take up our position in the Spirit as co-heirs of Christ, we are walking around as slaves instead of sons. And I'll explain to you the, the reason, what it looks like to, be, to, walk, to walk around as a slave, even though you are uh, saved by Christ. So let's go to Galatians 4, verse 5 to 7. It says, To redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you, you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So the idea to be a son and not a slave or adopted and not an orphan anymore is a position that we need to take up in the spirit. You see, we were redeemed from being under the law. Because the law separated us from Christ, from God. It separated us from God. And, and, and God had to make a way, and that He did through Christ. And in Christ, we have a new identity opening up the way for us to come to the Father. John 14, 6, this is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through so Jesus opened up a way for us to come to the Father. And that is our identity that we need to embrace. There is an awakening in the Spirit by the Holy Spirit to help us move from that being a slave of thinking, understanding there's a gap between us and God, into that place of being a son, being free, and being, having that open relationship with God. Being able to approach, as Hebrews says, approach the throne room. With boldness. And that is what the Holy Spirit comes in and, and do. That is what uh, uh, the difference is between a son and being free. And we need to understand. So the slave mentality. What is the difference between a slave and free? And here's a very. Now you need to just put, put your ears to, towards what I'm going to say now. A son and a slave both serve. But a son serves. Because he wants to, and a slave serves because he has to. There's a massive difference. You see, in a kingdom, being born again, you can live this new life because you have to, or you can live it because you want to. And that's a massive difference. That's a massive difference between wanting to live it and having to live it. And you can serve without being a son, but you can't be a son without serving. It's a very, very valuable thing. You see, when saying we are Christians and seeing or, uh, and seeing or living it as if it's a burden or a duty, we are still enslaved and not free. So when Christianity or your, your life in Christ is a burden for you and it's a duty for you, then we are still enslaved. And I think the misunderstanding is that sonship is, a, is that place for us to take up and not something that happens automatically. You see, it, it has been given to us. As God says, he's, he's, he's chosen us. We have received it. But yet, do we take it up? I can give each one of you a gift this morning, but it's, it's in your hands to open it up or not. And what you're going to do with that gift. So that's important for us to understand between the, be, be, uh, the, the, the foundation for sonship. Is that yes, God has given it to us, but it's a position that we need to take up in the spirit. You see, in the spirit realm, there's a, there's a difference we, we have the spiritual realm. We have the natural realm. So there's a difference between the two. Because in the natural, I can feel, see, talk, experience things in, in the physical. But the spiritual realm is, is more of a, for me, more of a deep desire, or a, a deep feeling embedded in my heart. It, it's more of what happens inside of me than rather what, what happens to me on the physical. So often we compare slavery to something that happens in the natural but sons in the spirit, in Christ and God's kingdom, looks different, although we can draw the parallel. And 
sonship in the spirit has more to do with the heart, our feelings, our emotions. And if our heart is constantly burdened and heavy, it will influence our emotions and ultimately lead to things like depression, fear, anxiety, low self-esteem, moments of rage, anger. Who of you have felt that? You know, I felt it before when I drive behind somebody that doesn't drive well. You sometimes do want to feel that, that moment, but negativity. Anyone being negative has, was negative this week? Yes, yes. You feel you don't get skepticism, being skeptic about things. And there's so much more. There's so much more that bounds us in, in, in the spirit that will lead to an outflow in the natural, in the way that you live life. And, and the spirit is a conscious decision, but, but sonship in the spirit is a conscious decision a reminder that we belong to a king. And, and in fact, through the king, through his son Jesus, we are able to overcome, live free from all of these things that holds us back. Because if you have anxiety or you have depression or you have fear, in the natural, you're going you're gonna to naturally not want to step out. Are you with me? It's going to be a challenge for you. It's, it's going to take a bit of time, but then... Eventually, when you realize, then you are able to step up. But not often. It, it takes a bit of time to get over that. So all our circumstances, everything that we have, there, there will be an outflow in, of what happens in the spirit into the natural. And when we have a joyful and a peaceful spirit, and we live in the freedom of a son in Christ, we will view challenges as opportunities. We will view trials or trials as a training ground for better equipping. And we will move from merely surviving to thriving in God's kingdom, in our lives, in everything that we do. So just as God has chosen each one of us, He also had to choose the right time. And you can look at Galatians 4. And it says that moment in history to send his son, um, he sent his son Jesus to redeem those who were under the law. So I don't have that scripture on there, but it's just a previous one that says at the right time, God made the decision to send his son in Galatians 4. At the right time. It was a right time and moment, uh, and moment in history where God sent his son Jesus to redeem those who were under the law. And that those who he speaks of is us. We were under the law. And we choose to respond to what we have received. Again, you've received the gift. And accepting Christ as Savior and living in our new identity given to us is a choice we have to make. So going back to Faith's story, we chose her. And we could have said no. Very easy to make a choice like that when you don't want to get involved with all the challenges that we might face. I've heard of stories where, where kids have, have gone into a family, but they were, uh, the mom was an alcoholic, she was a, a, a drug addict, and, and the kid had to suffer because of what the mom did, or the dad did, or the parents did. And the challenges that those people went through, and by God's grace, thank you, that faith never had any of those. And, and I just want to say this morning that we honor the mom for leaving faith in the hospital, for firstly going to the hospital, having her there, and then caring enough, having that, that little bit of care still left in her, to rather leave her at the hospital and not dump her in a river anywhere else. Because it happened. It's a reality. That's the reason why we became involved as well. And I want to I say to you this morning that we honor that mom for the brave decision that she took. And today, there's an opportunity where God can use that little child, together with her two, two siblings, to be world changers 
And I guarantee you, she's going to be one. It was so, so, so precious yesterday. We walked into Cash Build and, and Marlies and I were looking at some of the bricks and stuff and we're working, walking, uh, working out. And the, the very next moment, I, I was like, okay, where's Faith? And, and then I hear her and she's at the cashier. She runs back to me. She says, Daddy, give me money. Give me money. I need to pay the tani. I'm like, so she already went. And the thing that the little packet of seed that she had in her, in her hand, she already gave it to the counter. She had conversation there like, it was, they've known each other for, for ever. And she's like, no, no, dad, just give me money. I want to, I, I need to go and pay. But she's got such an open heart and spirit because of what God has done already in her life. And she's going to draw people into that. So I want to say to you that, that that is what opens up in us. When we live from a spirit of sonship or adoption into a kingdom into a new culture. So Carl always mentions the 500 favorite verses that he's got. I want to go on the same, and I want to say, I've also got 500 um, favorite verses, and, and this is one of them. So Ephesians 1 verse 4 to 5 says the following. It says, Even as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him, in love, everyone say, in love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. Okay, so those two verses alone is a sermon, which we don't have time for, for today. So I want to I wanna end off with three keys from this verse, from these two verses. The first one is that he chose us before the foundations of the world. And that verse illustrates clearly that it is in eternity past that He chose us. That means there was no time, no influence. It wasn't because I was special or, or, or because of anything that I did. God wasn't influenced by anyone. It was because of His love before the foundations of the world, before time, before anything, He already chose us. Number one. So you are chosen. Peter writes in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, he says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for his own possession, you, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Before the foundations of the world, you were chosen. That is Part of this, that, that's the spirit of that's what the spirit of adoption brings. It brings that that heart in us that says we are chosen. And what's the reason for choosing us? He gives a reason. Paul, Paul, when Paul writes it, he says to be a holy and blameless before Him. So the commentary in the ESV, when you look at the ESV uh, Bible and and what it says, it says God chose us with the goal that we be holy and blameless. But here's the key. That goal is not optional. It is, for, it is the purpose of our election. It is the purpose of why we, you and I were chosen. To be holy and blameless. And holy here is expressed as moral purity. Blameless is expressed freedom of guilt. Of trespasses, of sins. In which we formally walk. God chose us, and the enemy constantly wants to remind us, hey, whoa, you can't be holy and you can't be blameless. But it is by the redeeming work of Christ, by the blood of Christ, because of the love of Jesus for us, that we are able to be a holy and blameless people. Because it's not, not only who we are, but it is whose we are. Okay? It's not who we are, but it's whose we are. So he chose us for a reason to be holy and blameless. And as verse 10 of that, that same chapter says, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things to him. Things in heaven and things on earth. 
Second one is he predestined us. Predestined us in love. He predestined us. For adoption to himself, a son through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose. This is the motive. So the first one is the reason. He chose us in love so that we are holy and can be a holy and blameless body before him. And the second one is the motive is in love. His love for us. Because of his love, he chose us. Not our works, not because we are special, not because he was influenced, or, but purely because of the love of God. He, in his love, he had a plan for us. And in past eternity, God ordained and appointed us already for a specific position in him. And that position is to be a son in his house. And that happens through our us being born again through Christ. And he predestined, um, uh, the predestined that Paul writes was, uh, is a, means that God chose to save, uh, save someone, and that someone is you and I. So he predestined us to obtain the, an inheritance in him, and it speaks to me in three things. It speaks to me in identity, destiny, and authority. So when we are when we become sons, we receive a new identity. We, we can work and walk towards a destiny with the authority that's been given to us. So when we talk about identity, it's a position in the spirit and the spiritual realm. So firstly, we have to understand it's a position that we need to take up. Number one, we are co-heirs in Christ. That, that becomes our new identity. You are seen in the spiritual world as a co-heir of Christ. Number two, we share the privilege of being a son in the kingdom of heaven. And number three is we have the privilege of the Holy Spirit in us to guide us, to help us, and to comfort us. That's part of our new identity. We are royalty and a representative of the kingdom of heaven. That is who you are. You are royalty. You are a chosen race a royal priesthood and we receive the robe of the firstborn you guys can all go and look at, at uh, luke 15 the prodigal son and we receive the robe of the firstborn which is that new identity and a whole new standing in the spirit before the before the, the prodigal son walked in he was full of he, he came out of the big stuff but the moment that the father put that robe of the firstborn on him. He was given, he was restored as a son in the house. He was restored. And that is what the what the spiritual realm and the saints see. They see the the robe, the firstborn robe of Christ on us because of the blood of Christ over us. And they see, hey, he's being restored. He was restored, he's redeemed. And the key is that our new identity is not a right to be arrogant. It doesn't give us a right to be arrogant. But it gives us a right to walk in humility and in love because of what God did for us. That deep love that we have. But it also gives us the ability to overcome. Anxiety, everything else. We are able to overcome because of that place of redemption as a uh, as a son of God. So the second thing is destiny. So here's the thing. Our destiny, often we want to see it as a place. In the natural, we want to get into our car. Our next destination is wherever you want to go next. But destiny as a son is not a place, not only a place, but it's a person. And it's the person of Jesus Christ. We are not just going somewhere in our journey, but we are becoming like someone. And that is Jesus. So Romans 8.29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Psalm 127 says, it speaks of the arrows in the hand of the warrior. 
um, and that, that re represents the children of one's youth. And as sons, we are the arrows, and the Father have the power to launch us into our destiny. Each of us has a place of impact in a person's life, in our workplace, in our friends, family, etc. And there's such a place that we need to take up. But when we take up that place in the Spirit, we are able to be launched like an arrow out of the Father's hand to impact for the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of God. And the thing is, are we allowing God to do that with us? Is it because we... We have to do this now, or is it because I want to be? I want to do it. I want to be thrown as a, or, or released as an arrow to make a difference for the kingdom of heaven because of who I am. And the last thing is authority. You see, Jesus gave us authority in Matthew 28, 18, and 20. He says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That alone is a full mandate of where we are about to, or where we should go. Our inheritance is, isn't only for us as sons. It's not only for everyone sitting here this morning. But it's for us as sons and, and daughters to serve one another. And that serving one another extends to the person next to me. Loving my neighbor as, my, as I love myself. And walking in a manner, we spoke about it in the beginning of the year, Ephesians 1, we, uh, 4, verse 1, it says, walking in a manner worthy of our calling. What is our calling? Our calling is to go out into all the world and make disciples. And sometimes I think we, we see it as such a burden when we hear the word disciple. It's like, but how do I do it? Just to have conversation with somebody about what God is busy doing in your life. Spend time with that person. It only takes one person to reach another one. Each one reach one. Who are you reaching? And with what authority are you doing it? Are you walking the authority of I have to do this? Or because I want to do this? Because of who my father is? Jesus gave us the authority and our identity in him to go therefore and spend time with people. Teaching them all the things that you have observed, that you have observed from his life. That means we have to spend time in the Word. We have to know what Jesus did. And we have to understand and rely on the Holy Spirit in us to reveal, to constantly bring to remembrance the things that He has done so that we are able to walk this journey with others, spend time with others. You guys with me? Good. Good. Here's the thing. You can still, you can be in a family, but you can still be an orphan unless you accept that gift of adoption. A new way of life and starting walking your identity in Christ. Um, so imagine a church, imagine a church where each of us lives from that place of abundance. Just imagine that. What would the church look like if each one of us embraces the spirit of sonship and not the spirit of orphan? That orphan spirit. If we embrace that, we are able to live out of that abundance, which means we can speak and anxiety will go away. We speak, depression will be, will be casted out because we are not that person. But that's lies from the enemy. That's lies from, from being in this world. The pressures of the world is getting to us. But if you and I are able to walk as sons, if we, if we are able to, to walk in the freedom of a son, that means... And I'm not saying that the enemy is not going to, we, we're not going to experience these things in any way. But we are able to overcome all of this. We are able to joyfully celebrate in every situation. Our lives will, even if there's challenges, we are able to rejoice. Because it's not our strength, but rejoice for the Lord is my strength. 
the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I, when I, when I serve others or do things in life that, that shares the joy of the Lord in my life, that is where the strength comes in. It means I'm not doing it in myself, but I'm doing it because of Christ in me. And we have all been given the right to be a son and a daughter in the Father's house. And it's time for us to take up that rightful place. So I want to ask this morning, do you guys, do any of you have that orphan spirit? Maybe there's an area of your life that you feel, I don't say, what is, a, what is the response going to be? And I'm going to ask the ushers that we hand out communion. And, and then we're going to listen to a last song that just also illustrates the cry to Abba Father. And I want us to, as we take communion this morning, to be reminded of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. His love in His love. He chose each one of us before the foundations of this world. And He predestined us that we may receive the Spirit he predestined us for, son, uh, for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will. Each one of you already carries the victory of Christ in you when you have faith in Christ. So as we listen to that last song, allow the Holy Spirit to stir in your heart if there's any area of your life where you feel that, sure, I still have a bit of an orphan spirit. I'm struggling with my identity. I constantly feel that I'm not worthy. I'm not in a place where I can fully serve or fully be, be there. Let the Lord minister to you. If you do not understand your destiny, and I'm not talking about that, a place where you are, just the place where you're going to, but I'm speaking specifically about the person you have to become more like Christ. Let us, let us lay hands on you this morning and allow the Holy Spirit to awaken that desire in you. And if you struggle with, the, with, the, with understanding the authority of Christ, who Christ is in you, what the mandate is that He has received and given to you, and to me and to all of us, I want us to pray about that this morning. But let's, let's take communion first. And as we're going we're gonna to listen to that song now, and just in your own time, take communion, spend time with the Lord. And then when our song is finished, I'm just going to call out a few, few things that I feel the Lord lay in my heart. And we're going to pray for people this morning. So we can just start with that song. Thanks, Anka.
adoption or adoption into as sons into your house, into the kingdom of heaven. Our Lord, we, we want to respond to that this morning. We respond to that this morning. And as we were, we were just uh, listening to that song, I just saw a picture of the you need.